Hello once again, my friends. It is time for another installment from the Reddit user Emerald Aussie. This is part four of the Squirrelbeard saga. The Rise of Squirrelbeard. That sounds way more dramatic and dangerous. I really hope it's not as bad as I, I think it'll be, but it does have an NSFW tag, so that fills me with all kinds of dread. So, uh, yeah, let's let's see what Squirrelbeard is uh, rising to. Oh, I hate that I said that. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Hello again. Hi. If you're still with me, thank you. You're welcome. It's been nice getting this story out, cringe and all. It's cathartic. I see why people share these stories. I hope you're enjoying the tale thus far. I plan to post this part tomorrow, but I got some flack from missing details. I think that was the issue anyway. I'm not really sure. I am sorry. This did happen 20 plus years ago, and due to all the trauma, I actually have memory gaps. I mean, that's totally understandable. So... I'm using a mix of journal entries from that time as well as what I have recovered in therapy to flesh out this tale as much as I can. Fair enough. I also am condensing certain things on purpose so that the story isn't insanely long. If I didn't, it would be twice as long as it already is. I apologize if there are missing details. So far, it's been mostly set up for the main event, which we're getting to. If you haven't, you should read the first three parts. I did. This one I have a bit more of a clear memory of, and it gets into the meat of this story, so I figured I'll get this out tonight. I hope it's more satisfying than the previous installments. I mean, considering the last part that I remember the most clearly is the one where the girl just totally faked a pregnancy. Like, yeah, no, I, this is this is some crazy ass shit you went through, my dude. This tale covers from when I was about 20 until about 22. A lot happened in those two years, and... Age 22 is a good spot to pick it up in part 5. I'm going through our cast, trying to see if there's anyone specifically added. Uh, there's one new character, uh, Ultra Beard. Uh, this bitch was the girl Beetle was seeing at the time, and the worst woman, aside from her sister, to ever walk the face of the earth. This creature's disgusting waste of life is only given, listed here because she, unfortunately, plays a large role in two parts of this tale. Well, I can see that you got along very well with her. Uh, <laughs> I believe that's the same one from the other one, but, uh, yeah, not, not the, the you know, the, the other guys, whatever. I, it doesn't matter. We're going to get into the story. It'll explain itself. That's usually how this works. Okay, so we're going to jump forward a bit to my second year of college. I made it through the first without incident and just turned 20, so I was feeling almost like an adult. I decided I was ready to make the adult decision of going to see Squirrelbeard. We've been continuing to talk online this whole time, still daily. Our conversations had turned sexual many times by this point, but to be honest, I didn't realize it half the time. I was still unkissed and naive. This was all about the change. And so, against the advice of my mother, I decided to make the six-hour trek to go see Squirrelbeard. And this is where our story really begins. I got to Cityville, and SB was at work. He worked at a local game shop. He said it would be easier for me to meet him there than for him to give me directions to his apartment, where I'd be staying with him. I agreed, but when I got there, I felt a tremendous amount of butterflies. I hadn't actually seen SB in person since the day his parents sent him away, for almost five years prior. I knew I still loved him and was very excited to see him. I was shaking. I popped into a nearby market to walk around and clear my head. I still remember walking around that store with butterflies feeling like an idiot. I remember the market radio was playing Goodbye to You by Scandal. It's an 80s song I liked, and hearing it still reminds me of that moment. I know it well. I should have taken that as a message from the gods to get the fuck out of there and go home. But I didn't. I finally got the nerve to go into the game shop, and I was worried I wouldn't remember what SB looked like. The moment I walked in, those worries went away. I recognized him immediately. He looked different, to be sure, but he still looked like the boy I remembered. Gone was the clean-cut prep look, and in place was long, stringy hair that I cringe at now. Oh. Oh, he's got that straight guy long hair, doesn't he, where he doesn't take care of it well, huh? Yeah. But at the time, I thought was so hot, because at this point, SB could do no wrong in my eyes. He saw me and hugged me straight away. I hugged back and got lost in his embrace. This is cringy to remember. <laughs> I like your commentary. 
<laughs> I remember he had an odor, and now I would probably be turned off by it, but at the time, it smelled like him, and I loved it. Gag. Excuse me, I need a moment. <laughs> I like you. <laughs> okay, moving on. After we got off work, we went and had coffee at Starbucks and talked. It had been so long since we were able to talk in person that there was a lot of catching up. I filled him in on my life, college, Beetle, living with my mother, etc. He filled me in on his life, work, some fantastical Ren Faire stories, an ex-girlfriend I never knew about. So we ended up going back to his apartment. He lived alone at this time. His apartment was decorated with so many squirrels. I mean, I... I realize that his name in this is Squirrelbeard. I don't know what I was expecting. But it, somehow this is still worse. Just... Oh. Everything had a bloody squirrel on it. I didn't truly appreciate the level of his obsession with the little critters until later, but it was a bit unsettling then. He actually referred to himself as the Lord of the Squirrels. Oh god. I kid you not. Oh, I, no, I believe you. This is where the name Squirrelbeard is derived. Yeah. He invited me to his room so I could put my duffel down. We sat on the bed and continued to talk. He told me his perspective of the CB story from back in part two. Oh, oh yeah, I remember that story. I remember it well. I know she said horrible things about me and you believed her. I lost so many friends because of that. There was never any fucking baby. She blackmailed me, she tried to ruin my life all because I wanted to break up with her, he said. I never meant to abandon you, but she left and never even said goodbye. I couldn't. I was in a hurry. I was lucky to say goodbye to as many people as I did. My parents made a snap decision. I wasn't one of them. I'm sorry, I should have. You know. Okay. Okay, dude. Uh, I came back to you. In the end, I was on your side. You were one of the only ones. I appreciate that. I'm sorry for how things went down. Yeah, me too. We talked for several more hours until I started getting tired. I'm gonna go sleep on the sofa. Nonsense, you'll sleep in my bed. We're both adults, right? And we're friends, he said. I don't... I don't like where this is going. I want to scream at my past self right now. You naive child. Yeah, we're both adults. And just friends, nothing more, I said. I went to the restroom to put on my PJs, but I kept my bra on. I am fairly large-chested, and going without a bra was an invitation. I didn't realize an invitation wasn't needed. Oh, I don't like where this is going. Remember, I still not had my first kiss by this point. We get into bed and he turns out the light. I'm on the left side of the bed, lying on my left side, so I'm facing away from him. He is on the right, and I'm trying to go to sleep. I swear to every god on Olympus, I truly thought sleep was all that was going to happen. Then as I'm half asleep, I feel his arms come around me and reach for my breast. Oh no, I knew this was going to get ugly. I jump, startled at the touch. I wasn't expecting it, and I was, as I said, half asleep. At this point, I'm not sure if anything actually happened, or if it was one of those weird dreams you have sometimes as you're dozing off. Either way, I was now wide awake. I stayed on my left side, not wanting to seem freaked out in case it was a dream. I lay there for several minutes, just starting to think that I had dreamed it, and I was about to let myself relax enough to try and sleep when he did it again. This time I didn't jump, I didn't move at all. I was completely unsure what to do. What was happening? He pulled me onto my back and reached under my top. Hey yo, what the fuck? This motherfucker. He was not expecting to find a bra. He sighed and pulled it up to. Oh no, I don't like where this is going. Ugh. Now, dear reader, let me break the scene for a moment to answer a question I'm sure you have. OP, why the hell didn't you stop him? Well, you see, dear reader, I was 20, naive, and in love. I thought the fact that he was doing this meant that he loved me, and if I rejected him, it would be like saying I didn't love him, so I just froze. Yeah, no, I, uh, I understand where you're coming from with a lot of this, because when you don't have any experience and someone like this decides they're just going to take advantage, yeah. Also, if I haven't made it really clear, fuck this guy. He touched me and then pulled me into a sitting position, took off my top and bra and told me to take off my shorts and I complied and laid back down. He had yet to even kiss me and there was no way ready for sex. I was still in shock over this whole thing. So he got on top of me, still dressed, and started grinding- oh god. He did this for a few minutes and then he got off and took his clothes off. Is this what this man considers foreplay? Ugh. 
he pulled me over and grabbed my hair and guided me down, and I knew what he wanted at that point. I was naive, but not that naive. Uh, I gave him what he wanted, and when he was done, he got on top of me and whispered slash grunted, Oh, God, I'm gonna have to say this shit out loud. Are you ready? <laughs> Ready for what? The... You... Uh, I'd still yet to even have my first kiss, and I was in no way ready for this. I was still processing the fact of what I'd just done. And I shook my head. No, I pleaded for the first time. No? He put my hands on his... thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, I see where this is going. I did that. He wanted, uh, let's say, manipulation. I'm trying not to get too graphic here. Mainly because it's disgusting. I did that and seemed to satisfy him. He rolled off and put his pajama pants on and went to sleep. Classy. I grabbed my pajamas and put them back on and lay awake in disbelief until exhaustion took over and I went to sleep. The next morning he was acting like nothing happened and I was floored. I wondered if I had dreamt it. It was only because I found my bra on the side of the bed that I knew for sure that I had not in fact dreamt it. It happened. I had given my first BJ before even having my first kiss. Oh, honey. Everything about this is fucking just... I don't like this. I don't like this, and I'm getting angry. Now the important question here is, did I want it? Was it consensual? In a literal sense, yes. I never said no, and I didn't stop it. Do I feel I was taken advantage of? A bit, although not in comparison to what would happen later. I was honestly too shocked, really, to even register what was happening until it was over. I guess if I had my wits about me, I probably would have said no, but I didn't. So, no, I don't consider what happened to be assault or anything like that. I do consider him to have fully taken advantage of the situation, and that was still a scummy thing to do. Yeah. It's taken many years of replaying this night in my head for me to truly figure out how I felt about it honestly. It is something I still bat around in my thoughts from time to time, as I wish I could relive it knowing what I know now with the strength I have now, but we can't go back. Anyway, I digress. I just want to be the first person to tell you that I'm sorry you had to go through that, because that is just fucked up. Whether or not you consider it, like, a form of assault, one, I mean, it's your body, you get to make those decisions. It's, it is fucked. It is just fucking gross and wrong. I mean, he's an asshole for doing that, so, you know, I'm sorry either way. That's still fucked up. Uh, let's see, we got a donation from Gantt Chart. OP, if you're listening to this, don't ever blame yourself for this. No amount of naivete can ever justify what this snake thing did. No is a complete sentence. Absolutely correct, and thank you, Gantt Chart. <sighs> Later that day, he did eventually say something. He's really good at that. I'm sorry, I died a little inside. What? You know, he smirked. Ew. Oh, okay. That was my first time doing that, I admitted. No way, I don't believe that. You're too good. I didn't know if I should be flattered or offended. No, really, it was my first time. Well, then you're natural, he said. And then he dropped it, and it wasn't brought up again. I ended up leaving the next day. I was pretty relieved it was just an overnight stay. I was still processing everything. He never said anything about us being a couple, but all of his messages became a cesspool of sex after that. Suddenly, he didn't care about my day or my friends. He wanted to sex constantly, and he wanted to share every depraved fantasy he ever had with me. Mm hmm. His primary fantasy was about control. Oh, I'm so surprised. He fantasized about having a woman that was his sex slave, that satisfied his every desire and could not say no. Mm -hmm. He often made comments about wishing he could mind control me and make me clean his apartment in nothing but stiletto heels and then pleasure him upon his request. Oh, how fucking classy. He also fantasized about having a harem in which I would be the primary girl and command the other girls with him, but he would still command me. It made me feel really uncomfortable, but young love makes you overlook a lot, so I placated his sick desires, at least in text form. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm somehow not surprised that this guy is that fucking gross. It was not long after this, I had a longer break from school and flew to another state to see Beetle. It was here that I met Ultrabeard. It's the worst government experiment. I won't spend too much time on this 
creature. She was absolutely disgusting, and I never liked her. I tried to warn Beetle, but he was in love, and it turned out that he had lost his virginity to her, and sex is a powerful weapon. I found out later how creepy Ultrabeard was. She had a foot fetish. She would not wear socks. She compared it to wearing a condom, something Beetle should have also been doing. Oh. Oh. I spent a week in another state with Beetle, and during this trip, Bon Jovi happened to be in town. I got tickets for the three of us. UB only went because she had a car and Beetle didn't. We went to the concert, and the whole time UB was a downer. Back at the hotel, Beetle went to take a shower, and UB went in with him. To this day, Beetle swears they really did just shower. He says UB wanted to have sex, but he wouldn't because his best friend was in the other room. Understandable. I don't know if this is true, but I want to believe him on this one, so I do. Upon sharing this story with him pre-posting, he once again insists he did not have sex with her while I was in the next room. Seeing how happy Beetle was now that he lost his virginity made me rethink if I was a prude. I mean, I was in love with SB, sure some of his actions were on the creepy side and he was treating me like a sex object, but we're in our 20s, this is what adult love was, right? No. No. And so the debauchery persisted. I went to see SB pretty much any time I had a break from school. By this point, he was living back at home with his parents, but they allowed me to stay over. His dad had grown up next door to my mom, and so our families went back a ways. You know, small town life. I do. I don't like it. I think he swore I was just the girl next door sort of friend. I think this is because he made me be quiet that night when he started touching me again. Oh, here we go. This time, I was sort of prepared for him to do something. I wasn't sure he would with his parents across the hall, but I wasn't completely surprised like I had been the time before. This time, I did stop him. No. No, you did it before. You had me do that, and I still haven't even had my first kiss. Kiss me first, and then we'll see what happens. He sighed, but nodded and pulled me into a kiss. Hmm, how classy of him. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I finally got my first kiss at the ripe old age of 20 after I had already given oral sex. Just what every girl dreams of. I, I cannot say how much I want to give you a hug and make everything better, except that, you know, that's not how things go, and still I'm sorry. Also, this guy's a fucking asshole. Just, you know, really putting it out there. Really making sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this continued. We did everything but have sex every time I visited. I started getting hotels because I refused to do anything in his parents' house again. It felt icky. By the age of 21, I decided we've done everything but sex. We may as well go all the way. I expressed my desire to move things further. Also, keep in mind, we're not officially dating still, although he would make comments about cheating on me as if we were, so it was all very confusing. Yeah... I had to read that sentence twice because his mentality broke my fucking brain for a second there. On one visit, I made it clear I wanted to have sex. He seemed uneasy with this idea. He tried to change the subject. He talked about anything else. He grabbed my laptop and wrote Ode to Pepsi One, which is really gibberish and for some reason it's still on my laptop to this day. Why? He finally asked if I wanted to go to Target. I agreed because who doesn't love Target? I assume the people who work there. I was also confused. Did he want condoms? Was he trying to get my mind off of it? What was happening here? On the way to Target, he admitted his issue. I'm sorry. For what? Of issues because of CB. What do you mean? Have you not had sex with anyone since her? I have. I've had sex with X, the ex-girlfriend I didn't know about until after I started visiting him. But I get nervous. Why? Because of what CB did. What if I have sex with a girl fakes pregnancy again? CB ruined my life. I never got to go to Japan. I just really wanted to let that line settle there for a minute. My life will never be the same because of a kid that never existed. I'm not CB, I reassured him. I was trying to be understanding, but I was also a little offended. He could have sex with X, but he thought I was going to be a crazy psycho like CB. I know you're not. You're my friend. I just need time. I nodded, and of course, I agreed. I loved him and was willing to wait, hard as it was, and wait I did, until the next year when he finally gave in. This was also about the time Beetle called me and told me that he was going to be a father. 
He had just broken up with Yubi to get back together with Cowgirl, and a week later, it turned out Yubi was pregnant. But, like, for real this time. Beetle called me scared to death, and I cried with him on the phone. In turn, he helped me come up with a way to convince SB that I wasn't like CB, and our lives were about to get way more complicated. But that, dear reader, is a tale for part five. <sighs> okay. So, there's so much about this dude that's scummy. There's so, so much. Just, wow. Just fucking wow, my dude. Like, we can go, let's start with the elephant in the room, which is basically him just being absolutely fucking creepy like that. Uh, new support on Ko-Fi. Five dollars from River. Uh, if you see this, sweetheart, nothing about this is your fault. I hope you receive many affirmations and assurances. You are worthy of a healthy support system. Absolutely correct, River. Absolutely. This guy's a fucking asshole. Like, I will say that. There's so much about him that is just really gross and horrible and disgusting. The only, and I do mean the only leeway, tiny bit I will give him, is considering what happened to him with CB. That's it. I can understand that that is the kind of thing that can fuck with you. Yes, I understand that. And yes, I understand that that can make you hesitant to do a lot of things. Moving forward in your life when that kind of shit happens, yes. But that doesn't excuse the shit you already did. That does not excuse the behavior that already happened. It doesn't at all. It doesn't erase it. And it doesn't make it some kind of, oh, well, I didn't know. No, you knew. You knew exactly. You just chose to do this, which is gross, which is horrible. So, yeah, no, dude, you fucking knew. As for UOP, I don't know how the fuck you didn't just strangle this dude. I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it is, you know, love is blind and makes you do a lot of really dumb shit. Know the feeling. But, uh, yeah, this is... Wow. Just wow. And, you know, I just really hope... Well, I mean, from the way you've described it, you're doing much better and you're in a much better place now. So, I am glad that that's, you know, a thing. I'm glad that you're not... You're not in that position anymore and you don't have to deal with this douche nozzle anymore. But, what a fucking asshole, dude. Man, just... God damn. Just fucking... I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say at this stage. Just, I'm glad it's not this happened. I'm glad this isn't like a thing that's happening now, you know? That it's a story from the past. So, with that being said, we're going to end this particular episode. So, thank you all for being here. Um, if you enjoyed this, make sure you do the YouTube thing. Mainly because YouTube hates me. And you should do it just to piss them off. You know, be gay, do crimes. That's the Moon Horse motto. Also, uh, if you have noticed throughout this entire video, which I'm certain you have, I've uh, made comments that are seemingly from other people. And that's because they are. This video, much like many others, is uh, recorded live in front of my wonderful Twitch chat. And if you'd like to make your own comments and be a part of these videos, you can do that by joining us in chat. That is... Uh, my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash Mooney underscore horseface. I've never had to say it out loud and realize how incredibly stupid my fucking usernames are. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. Um, if you would like to join us for other kinds of streams, every weekend we do that. Same thing with Twitch. We're probably going to move a lot more stuff to Twitch. I'm not entirely sure when or how, but we're really thinking about it. And, uh, yeah. If you would like to support this channel, because this channel is brought to you, much like PBS, from viewers like you, uh, I have a Ko-Fi, which is like Patreon, but way better. And a merch store, which is possibly the best merch store on the internet. Possibly. I don't know, you'll have to check it out for yourself, and then you can tell me. Links to all that and many more things are in the description under this and every video. So thank you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everybody.